here's question one. We are doing um, geometry, that's to do with space, shape, and uh, oh, clearly there was shape and space involved um, in, in this um, set of GCC questions. And, it's, and these are word problems. In other words, they're a little bit edgy, a little bit more tricky. You have to think about it a little bit more, and they could be slightly into year eight work as well. But nothing you won't be able to actually grasp if you think a little bit. Some of you still in a, in, a, in the hurry to just get the work done and send it my way. Please don't do that. Do it well. Go over it and send it just once. So here we start. That is an awkward little set of building blocks made from little cubes. They're all the same. If you were to stand, let's do R first. It's easy to see. If you were to stand there where R was, and you, you shrink down to little person, you have a good look, you would see a square face, a square face, a square face. Looks like an L pointing that way, wouldn't it? There's a mark. Which means the other one is going to be the complete opposite to this one. It'll be a square there, a square there, and a square um, pointing to the right. So, okay? So they're the two little L's. One that way, one that way. Yeah, both little losers. So there you go. That matches the video. All right, so left and right, that's how it would look. Um, I shaded it because I didn't know the, the red would stand out. Some of you just went scribble, 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 scribble. Oh, I shouldn't have marked that right. Show the outline, that's the most important part, because then that clearly defines the number of squares for showing. And then shade it if you want to. Um, okay, many of you got this wrong because you didn't understand the question. How many cubes must be added to make this shape turn into this shape. In other words, we want to fill up all the gaps to make it look like a solid block like that. How many cubes must be added? Well, if you look carefully, I could put one, one at the back there and one at the back there. One at the back there and one at the back there. That's four cubes for a start. Then we come downstairs. Two at the front and two at the front. We're up to eight cubes. And so now we've got the first level completely built, eight. And then we're going to put one there to fill up the front, one there to fill up at the front, and one there. And don't forget, the bottom floor has now been built. So we want one, two, three, four, five, six, seven along the bottom, um, seven along the top that's now sitting on the bottom um, completed section. So we want seven plus eight, remember the eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, that's the floor done. Then we've, got, then we've got another seven straight across. Again, you need to build this with Lego or something, or just to think about it. But you'll go from there to there, if you add seven and eight, 15 extra cubes to make that cuboid completely filled out, all right? Again, this was badly red, very badly red. you got to draw one rectangle. His perimeter must be 20, which means the distance around the four edges must add up to 20. Some of you just read, oh, area 24, 12 times 2. No, because 12 across, 2 down, 12 across and 2 back up again gives us a perimeter of 24, 28. Not right. So you have to think again. Many of you just, again, this shows that you're rushing the work. Okay. So you've got to have a perimeter of 20 and an area of 24. So I did a rough sketch there to make sure I've got my maths right. You see, 6, 4, 6, 4 comes to 20. And of course, 6 times 4 is 24 as an area, centimetre squares. And there it is. I drew it as best I could with my graphics pen. Okay, that's it. This presented some difficulties. The answer is not 34, but this is me showing how I arrived at 34. Now, surface area, admittedly, is taught in year eight, but you've all held a dice, you've all held a little building block in your life, you've all held a little bit of Lego, and you've all stuck bits of Lego together or some other equivalent uh, toy. Um, surface area. We've done surface areas when we did faces 
and edges and vertices, corners. We've done that, yeah? So you're aware of 3D shapes. You're aware of that 3D shapes have surfaces that you can touch all around. Now, this is the situation with this one. I have got to build up a certain number of blocks. In fact, they're little cubes. And the total area that I can touch with my hand comes to 34 centimeters squares. Now, if you look at this one here, I'm going to try and draw it. I hope it's going to let me do this. Um, I won't be too glitchy, I hope. Look at, look at this cube here. I'm going to try and draw this. So I'm going to make it out of glass so we can see how it looks. Okay, so done good. If you can imagine that's made out of glass, I can touch the surface at the front, the surface at the back, the surface on the top, and the surface underneath. So it's one, oh, it's hard to draw. That's at the back, that's at the front, that's on the top, and there's one underneath. So can you imagine, if you were to put your hand around it like that, you will be able to touch four little surfaces on that little cube, yeah? So that, that'll have a surface area of four centimeters squared. Now, the one at the end is different because it's at the end. This is how he would look. Again, I'm doing my best to draw this. I can't touch that one because these two cubes are joined together. So I can't touch that face. I can touch the one at the top, the one at the bottom, this one at the back, and this one at the front. Also, this one on the side right there. That's five surfaces, okay? So I've got to think of a number of blocks put together, pure cubes, which give me 34 places where I can touch. Well, then you have to think, because if I've got four lots of eight, I've got eight cubes all stuck together, like that, and that will come to 32 centimeters squared. But don't forget the ones at the end have got an extra little face that we can touch. The one on the left, we can touch it because it's at the beginning and the one at the end, we can touch that as well. Okay, because that's at the end. That comes to 34 centimeters squares. And so how many cubes must you stick together? Well, it's called eight and that's my working right there. <clears throat> okay, a little bit tricky. Many of you did that well. Others of you didn't have a clue. Don't worry. Here's question four. This was very well done. Um, if I saw the number 648, you got one tick. If I saw 648 centimeters cubed, you got two ticks. It does say state your units. There's a mark for that. If I saw 12 times nine times six, you got all three ticks. All right. So there it is. There's your three marks. Do not do that and expect to get three marks. That's lazy because you definitely got it right but show where you got it from. And if you miss the centimeters cubed, please read the question carefully. This was reasonably well understood, but again, many of you did not understand the English language that was being spoken here in writing. The cuboid, this cuboid here, it's clearly not a cube because it's not 12 by 12 by 12, for example. All the dimensions are different. But this is like an empty box, and I'm going to fill it with identical little sugar cubes, or little wooden cubes, or little Lego cubes, but I'm going to fill it, and there's going to be no gaps at all. The length of each cube is a whole number, but many of you didn't see this. It's this whole number of cubes is greater than one, because if, if these were just centimetre cubes, exactly one, then the answer would be 648 which is really silly because they've already tested that okay we don't want 648 centimeter cubes in there we want to do it with other size cubes which fill up the gaps completely and leave no air between it okay but i'm looking for a pure cube that can divide exactly into 12. this pure cube must have a side that can divide exactly into nine and it must have a side that can divide exactly into six. And there's only one description. Here we go. 12 divided by three, four. Nine divided by three, three. Six divided by three, two. Okay. So this is actually a three centimeter by three centimeter by three centimeter cube. How many do I need to fit in there? Well, 
I'm going to need four to go across the front. I'm going to need three to go across the back in that direction. And it's going to stack too high because two lots of threes make six. It's going to be quite hard for me to draw in. I won't try to draw in, you know, four across, three, three back and two up. It's, I'll make a mess of it. But understand, you're going to get this on video quite soon. All right, so these are, cent these are three centimetre cubes in three direct in th all three dimensions so it's four by three by two four times three times two is 24 i need 24 of these cubes to completely fill up um, that space inside and these are 24 lots of the three by three by three they're not one by one by ones these little tiny ones no these are three by three by three so they are three 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 okay and clearly 12, 9 and 6 are multiples of 3. So 3s were fitting perfectly in all directions. Okay, so it's 24 cubes I will need. Last question, a little bit tricky. Many of you misunderstood this sheet is actually a rectangle. Yeah, it's a rectangle. Which means the angles in the corner are 90 degrees. Yeah, must be it's a rectangle. Now I'm going to take corner B and fold it over. A little bit of origami coming up. <clears throat> okay, so here it is. If I take corner B and fold it like so and then flip it over, that corner is still going to be 90 degrees because it always was 90 degrees. There it is. I'm just going to fold it over. Hey, and if that's 90 degrees and I make a 70 degree fold, that means the remaining angle in that triangle has got to be 20 degrees because the angles in a triangle add up to 180, you know that. So if this has been folded perfectly like that and I've made a kite arrangement, if that's 20 degrees, then so is that 20 degrees. It's got to be, that's logical. So I've got a 20 and a 20 and a blank and it's the blank we're trying to work out. You will see, I hope, because it's a rectangle, that's still 90 degrees across there, yeah? So if I take away 40 from 90, I will get 50 degrees. X is 50 degrees. So, you know, one of you, who I won't name, just wrote down 50 degrees. Maybe you rang your friend. Maybe you text your friend. Maybe you ask your mum or dad. Don't do that. You have a go yourself and do it. Give me an honest blank, but give me one or two steps because, let's take a look, there's four marks for this. You're not going to get four marks for just writing down 50 degrees. I might give you one, but I could say maybe they're guessing. No marks. There's no maths. Unless you're showing me maths, an examiner at GCSE may or may not give you one mark for the final answer. Anyone can guess. You might say, oh, it looks a bit like 50. It looks bigger than 45. I'm going to go with 50. So you can have a guess. There's no math in that. All right. So I think that's it. 